when you think about spiking, you think about passing out somewhere and not knowing what happened. You don't think about what happens when you don't pass out, like all the different effects and what the long lasting impact is. It's quite easy to just put some, put like something in someone's drink. So it can still happen no matter what you look like, no matter how old you are, where you are, what you're wearing, none of that matters because if somebody sets out to spike another person that night, they will do it. Cases of drink spiking in the United Kingdom are said to have doubled in the last three years. The risk involved in going out clubbing in Glasgow is increasing at an extremely high rate. Although drink spiking is illegal and can cost you up to 10 years in prison, people are continuing to carry out this act on unsuspecting strangers and even their own friends. If an assault, rape or robbery has also taken place, the 10 year sentence can be even higher. Places came to my mum and dad's door like half six and told them that I'd jumped from the window. Um, so they kind of like said it was suicide, which is totally not anything that my mum and dad would, or I would consider doing. Um, so when they heard that, they thought they were just like shocked. Yeah, we thought she was dead. Like, we, we, she was unresponsive and there was like blood trickling out of her. We didn't. Like, yeah. We honestly, we thought she was dead for like the first couple minutes and we were like, we, f we knew that if we got like uh, ambulance stuff there quick enough, it, it'd probably be okay and she'd have a good chance of recovering. And it was really when she regained consciousness that we were able to like breathe out, like relax a bit because we actually knew she was not completely dead. Date rape drugs are used on unsuspecting victims across Glasgow every week. The three most common date rape drugs are Rehypno, GHB and Ketamine. They are usually odourless and have no taste or smell, which make them easy to slip into anyone's drink without notice. Drink spiking can cause harmful effects such as hallucinations, sedation, increased heart rate and paranoia that could lead to extreme injury or even death. Figures on drink spiking have increased in the UK by 110% since 2015 and this is only the reported cases. With the use of these drugs on the rise, the question is raised on how do we stop innocent people from being spiked. Alex Taylor is a university student in Glasgow who had her drink spiked whilst on a night out with friends. This resulted in devastating injuries. If it wasn't for Alistair Murray and others who heard Alex screaming, the end result for Alex Taylor and her family could have been much more severe. She is lucky to still be alive. I think some guy was kind of being weird um, just before I left. He was kind of being quite aggressive as well, um, which caused me to like freak out and I literally just like bolted, I just left. Which usually isn't me, like it's not me for a night out. I would just usually get on with a night out and be fine. So I went home, I can't remember getting home. And then my flatmate like let me in and I was like telling her what had happened, but I can't remember telling her anything. I literally just remember like two seconds speaking to her and then she put me to bed. We just like passed Charing Cross and then um, we heard like someone shouting for help. We like got a bit further along and we saw her like squatting on the window ledge sort of. And like at the time she was like completely naked, like no no shoes, no socks, no nothing. And um, she was she seemed distressed from what was in the room. So at the time we thought it was some form some of like sexual assault or something. And she was trying to get away from it. So we we're like, all right, we need to do something here. I don't think like people realise how bad it could actually get and it kind of sent a good message that like if your friend is in that situation or if she thinks she's been spiked like you need to make sure you actually like, sit, like spend the night with her instead of just like leaving her and like going to sleep because it's like what after that like, I jumped out the window like you would never think that could happen. I was meant to be going home with my flatmate because um, she was working that night but I didn't tell anyone I'd left, I didn't tell my friends I was with, I just left. I started trying to climb and we were like just talking to her, trying to keep her calm. And then I was like halfway up and I couldn't like get right the way up. I like tried to get to her, but I couldn't because of like the angle I was at. And she just fell and landed like head first and her legs like went over and she kind of like flopped back down. So I jumped down, 
like, are you okay, are you okay? She was completely unresponsive, mm -hmm. and we were like, what the hell? And then uh, you just saw blood start trickling out of her ear, and it was a bit, we were like, oh, okay, this has just got a whole lot realer. After, like, you have a head injury, you can, like, be, you come, like, unconscious and conscious, and you're really angry in that time, because mm -hmm. you're, like, scared, obviously, you don't know what's going on, so I was really scared to the paramedic, but I don't know if that was, like, from the fall or if that was the drug. Somewhere between five and 10 minutes, she regained consciousness, but at the time she was really like obviously disorientated because she just had a massive head trauma. With them sort of instance, if you like fall wrong or like after, you can be like paralyzed. It's so that's where the bouncer that was found me was like holding my neck to make sure I didn't move or didn't like cause more damage than I already had. Like just because I look, I don't look like anything's happened. Like it's not like that. It is like mentally like I still have to sleep with like my door open and my light on and like all the windows completely like shut and locked and just because and it does it did take me like a while to get to sleep like every night it was like two hours and I would just go in my head all the bad things that could possibly happen it's not anything related to like the accident but even if there was a light on outside I'd be like mom like people are coming to break into the house like can you please go check outside just scared of everything and she'd look outside and it's just like a bright moon it's like it's literally nothing but I'm just all these like horrible things in my head I feel like it is quite hard going back to uni or back to just like socialising. Everyone just assumes I'm totally fine, but like, I don't know, mentally I'm quite affected by it. I can't not think about it and it just goes on and on and on. Following the outpouring of shock and support on social media from thousands of members of the public, Alex Taylor was then invited onto ITV's daytime magazine show this morning along with her sister Ellie, to reflect on what was for her a terribly horrific ordeal. Cara Teven, a fourth-year law student in Glasgow, learned that her friend had been spiked on a night out, which prompted her to create the Facebook campaigning group Girls Against Spiking, which aims to promote the continued use of attachable, protective lids on drinks throughout student unions and other venues in Scotland. Girls Against Spiking is a Facebook campaign that's aiming to put lids on cups in any busy space where people are consuming alcohol. So anywhere where there's a crowd, there should be a lid on cups. Obviously that would be the end goal, but just now I'd like to, if I could have a map of Glasgow and have five, six, maybe seven places where people can make a conscious choice to go there, knowing that their drinks will be safe and they'll be safe. So ideally I'd like all the unions in Glasgow to participate in it. So obviously Strathclyde Union already does, but I'd like Glasgow Cali Union to do it and the two unions at Glasgow before moving on to the other unions across Scotland because I get people messaging me saying, you know, I feel unsafe in my union and I'd really like you to get them to participate in the campaign. So that's definitely the next step. Strathclyde Union, they decided within a day that they were going to do it and within a week they had already implemented it and it was in place. So they were incredibly supportive. I do just think it's down to people being busy rather than them not being supportive of the issue, but I am determined to get more people to listen. This has only really been in the works for about a month, but the response has been incredible. It's got 3,500 likes now and it's just grown all the time. Um, and the support I've had for everybody has been amazing. I've learned more about spiking in the past month since setting up the page than I ever knew before. I knew it was a massive problem. I'd heard loads of stories about people getting spiked, but I've only since learned that it's a massive thing in the gay community. I, I didn't realise as many men get spiked as they do, how men can get accidentally spiked when they drink their girlfriend's drink that's meant for them. Um, I learned that spiking's grown. It's trebled in the past year in Scotland. It's, the figures have grown by 137%. So I've definitely learned more about the scale of the issue and it is just immense, it's just massive. I would say there's probably thousands of people that are spiked in Scotland every year openly, but again on top of that there will be people who never think about the fact they might have been spiked or they hide it um, because it is still a bit of a taboo subject. People don't want to say they've been spiked because it leaves them open to people saying no you were just too drunk, you didn't keep an eye on your drink. When I was doing the interview, people were like, commenting, like tweeting, saying like, oh, this never happened, like, look, she's like smirking, like all this sort of stuff. And I was like, I was just trying to like not look media on TV. Like it is, I don't know, it's not, it wasn't that at all. Like it has happened. It's like crazy for people to think that 
I've like made that up or that's not happened. It's the same with everything, but there's no one person you say, oh, they look like they spike people's drinks. Every, it's so common now, groups of boys do it to other boys because they think it's funny. Um, and that's something I've been more aware of since starting the campaign. Is, and since it happened to my friend, I thought, you know, like, no matter who you're with, if you're with your boyfriend, if you're with a group of pals that you feel really safe with, it can still happen. There's like people there now kind of just looking, thinking like, Oh, like, are they bad? Like, are they here to spike people? And I can't help but think like that. I'm sure they're not. They're probably just there for a night out. But it was, you kind of think, like, well, well, watch me drink or I'm not leaning the table in case, I don't know, someone does put something in it. There was a drink in the table that we were all sitting at and, like, no, none of us knew whose drink it was. And, like, usually someone would just have, like, taken it and drink. But this time we were, like, because we, we still start to realise that that is one of the ways to do it is just like spike it and put it on a table and wait for someone to take it. Uh, so we just kind of like completely got rid of it. You, you do notice that you become a lot more aware of what is actually happening. You do notice that when folk are being particularly creepy towards like certain people, it does kind of, you notice it a lot more, you definitely do. I think it's an issue everywhere. Like honestly, I thought somebody would say to me in the bin, you know, somebody's already done this. Somebody's already come up with this idea because it's just so simple. Um, it's, I just can't believe no one's ever come up with something like this because it is a massive problem for everybody. It's not just for young girls. It's for young men. It's for older men. It's for everybody. Everybody can be affected by drink spiking. I think I know probably about six people in Glasgow and they, within my friend group who have been spiked at some point, and. Like, I always know that like, you can get spiked and stuff, and I've had a mate who's been in hospital from it before, but like, he never, it was never anything serious. He just needed uh, like, the night in hospital to recover and stuff. But this was a completely different situation. I remember being told advice about drinking too much, but I was never ever told about drink spike. And I think the only person that's ever gave me advice about it is my mum, and she said, you know, watch your drink, finish it before you go to the toilet, all that sort of stuff. But it's beyond that now because as soon as you walk through a crowd your drink can get spiked. You can't spend your whole night staying at your cup. Don't take a drink unless you know where it's come from and if someone offers you a drink don't take it unless you've seen it physically be poured or anything. Better to be wary for it to not happen again and I'd definitely be a lot more cautious in the future like not accept any drinks from any guys and like not let my friends really do it either. You can't live in fear. It's the same with any big social issue like terrorism. You can't not go out and do things because of this because it can happen anywhere at any time. You just need to go out be as careful as you can, but most importantly, you need to remember that it's not your fault. No one has ever been drink spiked and it's been their fault. We don't expect anything like that on now and it's you need to be aware and it kind of has, it's definitely affected how much I drink and stuff. It, it's definitely on the increase. And as much as you need to be careful who you get a drink from, what you're drinking, make sure you keep that drink on you the entire night. Other than that, I don't know what else you can do. I feel like you just have to keep a close eye on your friends and make sure that like they're not, if they are too drunk, then like, or acting like a different, get them home and um, just like look after them, really stay with them the whole time and make sure that it's, they're not left on their own at all because that's when they could be vulnerable. I think people are talking about spiking now because of the campaign that never thought about spiking before, you know, like middle-aged men. But people say to mum and dad, oh, that's brilliant, I'd never even have thought about that. I didn't realise how much an issue it was. So if anything, at least the campaign's got people speaking about it. Yeah, like my back is really, really sore. Um, and like my ankle as well. It's just kind of one ankle. My feet have kind of all like cleared up because there was like loads of scars and that all over them. But they've like gotten so much better now, but it's just my ankle's really sore and I've kind of got like a limp. I feel like I owe people that have been spiked something now because they put their trust in me and if anything, it just makes me more determined to carry on, make the campaign bigger and make sure no one's ever spiked ever again. With so little drink spiking related incidents being officially reported in Scotland every year, it is difficult to fully grasp the scale of the issue. It is clear that drink spiking is a problem that is on the rise and we know of the devastating impact it can have on its victims' lives. Therefore, we must ask ourselves, is drink spiking a social issue we can eradicate for good or is it something we must continue to live with in constant fear of it happening to someone we know and love to then be faced with the very real possibility 
of life-changing or indeed fatal injuries.